Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another awesome Adobe Live. My name is Jesus Ramirez. I'll be your host for the day. And today we have my good pal, Sean, back for another um, Photoshop compositing stream. How's it going, Sean? Good to see you. I'm good. How are you, man? How, like, how's, how's it going? It's only been like, I think like a month since we've seen, seen each you other. You know what? It, it's been, it's, it's probably been more than that, but it feels oh, yeah. like, like a month. Yeah. yeah like, it feels like time's going by so fast right now. Just... So fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, last time you were on, you worked on some compositing stuff using uh, Pixel Squid, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. yep. And uh, what do you have for us today? Well, we'll still like, obviously, we'll still be using Pixel Squid. It's uh, super easy. But I also have a really cool brush pack that I'll be um, showing off today. Um, had it for like a while now and it's just become like super easy for me to um, edit with a lot of things like blending into like just rough landscapes and it's been working out really well for me. So I want to really show that off and some of my favorite brushes that I've been using. Nice. And, uh, and yeah, so we'll just be combining pixel squid, um, uh, images from Adobe stock and brushes today. Nice. A lot of fun stuff. So let me just take care of a quick, uh, housekeeping items. Uh, first of all, the um, design feedback. I just completed the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge for today. We worked on some hairdo replacements, which you might have seen. I saw you in the chat. And um, in about an hour and a half, we're going to review those together. So make sure that you submit your work into Behance.net, uh, into, I'm sorry, into Discord. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go into Behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop and there is the link right now in the screen that you can go to and submit your work under Creative Challenge. And yeah, you and I should be looking at some pretty interesting work. This has been a fantastic week with the Daily Creative Challenges. A lot of good work. Uh, I'm looking at some of the work there and I'm like, man, that's better than what I did. <laughs> like, so a lot, of, a lot of good work, a lot of good work. Um, so yeah, and also the uh, schedule for the day, I'm sure that will pop right up if, there we go. We started um, the day with uh, Spencer, then me, then uh, now the non-biased, the best stream of the day with you, Sean, yeah. doing photo compositing. And right after us, we have the amazing Paul Tranny doing the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. So, you, uh, so make sure that you stick around for that. It's a lot of good streams uh, today. But again, mm -hmm. non-biased, I think this one might be the best yeah. one. Might, might have to be the best one. <laughs> Might just have to be the best one. <laughs> All right, man. Um, are you ready to get started or? Of course, always. Awesome. All right. So here's, you know, my favorite quote. Got to show that off. Live simply so others may simply live. It's a good quote. Nice. Why, by. Is that your, why is that your favorite quote? Um, I don't know. I just feel like it is just, it's so true, right? Like um, if the more complex that you like make things like in life, the more complex it's going to come back to you okay right so like i feel like living simply is just if you want like a simple solution to come back to you just live simply so that it always is just going to come back to you sim like simply so mm -hmm. i i really like this it really just keeps my anxiety you know going nice. i'm not freaking out about a lot of things all the time yeah. if i read that then i'm just like oh yeah living simply yeah okay nice and is that <laughs> on your and, and obviously that's your desktop right like you can read it whenever you like yeah, yeah, exactly. It's on uh, nice. yeah, my desktop. I think I have it on a picture, like I have a, on a quote somewhere, like around my bedroom there too, uh, somewhere. But uh, I definitely have it all over the place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also, um, I just wanted to quick uh, just mention the chat. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us. I see a lot of familiar faces. We have yes. Plotty, Anika, a lot of people from the stream that I just did. Uh, Sean, Sean is saying that um, my cans, this is what we call them in the business, cans. <laughs> <laughs> that my cans are smashing my hair. No. Uh, yeah, let us know in the chat where you're watching from. I see, uh, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, Tornst, uh, Tornsten from Germany. Um, we have somebody Germany. from Bangladesh. I'm currently streaming from the Manche from Manchester, UK. What about you, Sean? Are you still in Canada? Oh, yeah. Still in Canada. It hasn't snowed yet. It's uh, basically on the edge of snowing right now. Like, we're, it's dropped from, like, like 25 degrees all the way down to like 10 now it's we don't get anything higher than that basically so nice judith is saying shao for shao from nyc leah from virginia nice good to see you anika from india thank you so much india. for for watching yeah we got um christy from maryland people from all over the world denver colorado heather hey heather how's it going good to see you awesome 
Hey, Toronto, there we go. Oh, we have Toronto in the house, nice. Deep in the heart of Texas, Norway. Cool. All <laughs> Norway, right, so there go. the magic is here, and I'm guessing that's you, Sean. Yeah, I'm the wizard, right? So, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> so I'm, we're going to be creating this today. Um, Ooh. Yeah, so that's why I put like a little bit of a blanket over it, you know, like so I can just reveal it and be like, <laughs> you know, when they get a fancy new car and they just pull off that sheet and it's just like smooth. So I yeah, tried to yeah. do the same thing, but you know, it's not as epic, but. This is what we're going to make today. Um, so we're going to start like clean canvas and we're going to, I'm probably going to add some more elements in here, but we're going to see how far we get with it. Um, okay. I'm hoping to do the whole thing because um, I do want to do another uh, composite uh, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, so we're going to start off fresh here. Um, let's start off on our, this is where the magic happens. And let me just grab my files here. Got them quickly sorted on the side. Nice. And, and while you do that, I'll try to answer a question. Maximiliano is asking ahead. a question. Um, I'm assuming you're referring, Maximiliano, the question, the way you wrote it is, who knows if, it, if it's possible to use the old workspace of the raw module? I try to disinstall Photoshop, but I get the new one. Uh, so I'm assuming you're talking about the camera raw filter or, or camera raw um, plugin. Um, there's, as far as I know, there's no way of bringing back the old layout. Um, so unfortunately you are stuck with the new, um, layout and I'm not exactly sure why you would want to go back. Maybe you're familiar love, with it I and that's, it. yeah, I think the new one is, it's, uh, it's much better. It has more features and in my opinion is be better laid out. Um, but I understand that you might just be familiar with mm -hmm. something and just don't want to relearn where something is, but. I, I do think that the newer one, it's, it's an improvement, but unfortunately, if you're used to the older one, you cannot bring it back as far as I know. All right. So I am going to, yeah. So let me just show you exactly like what I've been playing around with for the past few months. So this is a brush pack that mm -hmm. any, everybody can download, by the way. Um, uh, it's on the Adobe site. I believe if there's a link, if anybody can pull up a link or something, I might have a, a link somewhere. Actually, it's on my Instagram. There you go. If you want to go on my Instagram at Sean Riken, it's right inside the um, bio description right there. But it's for the uh, Keith Herring um, uh, contest that's going on right now. Definitely recommend uh, entering that. But nice. check out check out these brushes though. So I'm gonna go with my favorite. This is the vinyl scraper one here. This mm -hmm. is one of my favorites. But it's just so. Oh, let's go with a different color here. But it's just so like. Like it's got that like paint, really nice paint like look to it, and, and it's yeah. jagged and rough, and you can just look super over. cool. Super yeah, cool. So when we went, to, so when I did kind of like the the background here, it worked really well yeah, with like yeah. the the paint splatters. So right, nice. We're gonna do that same effect with this basically. Um, I am uh, so I'm gonna kind of like cheat the design a little bit only because I don't want to spend hours cutting out. Um, I'll show you what I was going to be cutting out today. Um, but yeah, so everybody I'm, I'm assuming knows how to kind of like, you know, use the quick selection, all that, select an object and cut it out. That's probably been covered so many times in um, different videos. But let me just grab it up, uh, the image that I was going to crop out. Um, so Okay, so this is a the image here of a painter. Let me mm -hmm. just bring it to the top. So as you can see, you know, it would have probably taken me like hours to crop that like out. It did take me um, like two hours or so to get around the ladder and everything like that yesterday. So to save time, we're just going to basically bring that uh, ladder guy back up. And I said, sorry, I'm lazy in the, <laughs> in the thing. Because I already knew that I was going to. It took me hours last night. So I said, oh, yeah, we're going to have to. There we go. Perfect. It's just so, like a cook cooking show. You know, we just pulled out the turkey out of the oven and it's done. Exactly. It's already there, right? So we're, we're going to use this. I'll draw the ladder back. We're, we'll remove the, um, we'll disable that mask so you can kind of mm -hmm. see what it looked like previously. And then I went around doing a layer mask and revealed all around. It was just really tough because as you can see, like there's some like nice, yeah. what like glares on the ladders here. Yeah, so yeah, that's, yeah. that's basically what took my time. So... We're Any particular, oh, sorry, just quick, uh, one of, uh, uh, 
question out of curiosity for me. Um, any particular reason why you prefer layer mask as opposed to vector mask? No, any particular, and might not be a reason. No, there's just no uh, reason really. I just uh, have always um, just went right with the uh, the layer mask. It just, I yeah. just terminology that I guess stuck in my head over time. I just mm -hmm. never really tried it. I feel like they both almost do kind of a similar thing, right? Am I right or am I? No, you're correct. There's just uh, one is vector based, the other one is pixel based, but they Perfect. theoretically both do the same thing. Um, Sean in the chat is saying naming layers. Very good, Sean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very uh, it's very hard for to get me to name layers, but yes, I do actually like name layers like here and there. All my shadow layers, like this one, I I probably won't name only because it makes it like I like to use the big image previews here. So I really don't like when I'm quickly going through my files, I just look mm -hmm. at that image rather than yeah. the yeah. title. So it just makes it like go by so much easier. Definitely. I'm just gonna kind of trail down here because this is the nice. direction that he's going in, right? So, and yeah. then we're gonna just add, you know, down here. You can be as rough as possible with this because it's uh, yeah. it's a roller, right? So it's not, it's yeah. not gonna be perfect. And I really like that brush and I'm hearing clicking. So you're not on a Wacom, right? You're just using a mouse. Oh yeah, just a and, just a mouse. Yeah, and it looks really good. I still haven't I still haven't upgraded to the tablet yet. I'm uh, I'm so old generation. Like I just I, I feel like just the mouse is just you know it's so good still, it's so good to me. You know what? I, I converted, but man, I'm still so good and so fast with the mouse that sometimes I just prefer it. Like you probably seen the streams that I do. I, when I teach, I definitely don't use a walk -on. I can I just use a mouse. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see. I can see that because you can just it's, I do know that I definitely do need to upgrade over to time and get used to like that the good old tablet life. But um, but for now, yeah, like I do have a bamboo tablet somewhere around okay. my office, but yeah. uh, it's not one with like a screen or anything. So it's not really giving me the best perspective of all. I just can't work flat down and up at the same time. It just it throws my eyes off because only one of my eyes actually work. I think Keith was a little late into the stream. He wrote, what are you guys doing? Saw Keith Herring brush set and was curious. Oh yeah, so this is what we're doing actually right here. This is why I, uh, perfect. This is exactly what we're doing right now. Nice, that's what we're doing, Keith. Exactly that. We're gonna try and <laughs> Sean wrote. It. Sean wrote, I know, it, I know what layer 52 is exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I know what layer 52 is. <laughs> That's funny. I wouldn't. Sometimes it can go up like so. Like, what would you see like a, a low amount of layers for a file would be? I would say like I normally at least like minimal, probably around like a hundred layers per file. Well, I mean, it depends on the project and a compositing job for sure. Um, if it's you know maybe if you're like reworking a, a photo or something, you know maybe like ten or so, but. Yeah, definitely for compositing, definitely in, in the high, high, you know, close to 100, if not more, at least. Oh, yeah. So it's all those shadow layers, the shadows, lighting, all that kind of stuff. So basically yeah. what I did down here is um, I straight, like I just went right across with the selection tool, just the selection box, and I mm -hmm. just erased it because you're not going to yeah. see really that much paint on the floor. And if you mm -hmm. do, then you're a bad painter. <laughs> and, and clearly this guy's a professional. Yeah, clearly. Right. Like, look at he, he's got he's got the gloves and the suit yeah. and everything. Yeah, this is like this is not DIY anymore. This is a this is a profession right here. He knows what's up. Oh, Sean is saying, <laughs> don't talk about the banana. Are we talking about the uh, banana secret society that we're all in and that we're not supposed to talk about? But banana yeah, we're talking secret about society. Yeah. Oh, you don't have a banana. You, you got to get a banana in there, man. Come on. A banana in here? Yeah. No. So yeah. you see on the you see on the toolbar, a Photoshop toolbar on the left hand side above yeah. the foreground color picker. There's three dots. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, click wait. on those three dots. No, no, no. At, at the bottom. Oh, oh, at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Three uh, above the the uh, below the oh, zoom yeah. tool. Yeah. Oh wait. Click on it and then go into Edit Toolbar. Hold Shift and click on Done. So click on done while holding shift. Where's and, that oh, wait, you didn't get the banana. What happened? It doesn't like you. <laughs> oh, what is it supposed to give me a banana? Yeah. So, so, uh, how, okay. So, so reset to default. 
sorry for messing up your toolbar. Uh, Restore defaults here. Yeah, and then hold shift and click on done. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. All right. So you've just been uh, knighted into the banana secret society. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I've always wanted to be in the banana society. <laughs> That's so funny. I didn't know. Yeah. Who who just who randomly discovered that one day? I I found that out through an Adobe engineer at a conference, um, really? a Photoshop engineer at a conference, and this is I I don't remember what version of Photoshop that was in. It was like maybe twenty sixteen ish, fifteen ish, something like that. All right, so <laughs> here's a yeah, here's a beautiful sky image. So what I do now is I just right click this and then say create clipping mask. And what it does is it just keeps that image within Ooh. my last, you know, within my last like little area here. So now it looks like nice. uh, clouds. I'm gonna just put it down here because uh, we're gonna add our own grass with uh, pixel squid up front because just a lot nice. easier, gives you more flexibility. So now it's open up our, uh, well, it's already open. Perfect. Would you look at that? Ooh. And what is Pixel Squid? So Pixel Squid is a um, 3D uh, library, um, mm -hmm. basically. And what it provides um, to you is um, assets to use within your composites. And they already have like no backgrounds and they apply shadows. It's basically 3D objects. Um, this is like if you don't really know how to use like uh, any like 3D software yet or um, like dimensions or anything, which I will mm -hmm. soon because Adobe Max, I literally set my whole schedule to Ado uh, Adobe uh, Dimensions this year. Oh, you're going to watch a lot of uh, uh, Janet Matthews' session. Yeah, I'm going to, I think I got, yeah. I think I filled my schedule so much that I'm literally going from like, like one in the morning all the way up until like five at night. Wow. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. It's like, it's like so different right and you know you gotta you gotta get in on this opportunity because yeah. it's free so yeah and and yeah you definitely have to um check out adobe max is free i don't know if it's for the first time ever but it's definitely free this year it hasn't been free before there's gonna be thousands of sessions from creatives from all over the world um i know adobe live is gonna be there and they're gonna be doing a whole bunch of stuff so make sure that you check it out um, I would tell you what my sessions are, but I forgot already. So I'm sure Sean <laughs> might be able to tell you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll be doing several sessions at Adobe Max. If I'm not mistaken, this is my fifth year, maybe fourth, fifth, fifth nice. or fourth year. I don't remember. Um, but yeah. So I like how you're just, just, I'm sorry. What, what were you going to say? I was like, I'm just going to, I think we were about to say the exact same thing, actually, about, yeah, go, go um, about ahead, how, go how easy it was to just duplicate and, yeah. and move over. It looks yeah, super I was, cool. I was going to do that, but I realized I want this one on a different angle. And you can't, that's the only thing about Pixel Squid is that if you duplicate this one, they they become attached in a sense because they're smart objects. So mm -hmm. any alterations you would have made to this one, it would have made it to the other ones. So that's why I kind of like created a new one only so that they're completely separated now. Got in it. The background there. Nice, nice. And is Pixel Squid paid or free or it, trials or how does that work? So it's paid, but but I actually got the, the green light to give away. Um, Ooh. Yeah, 10, uh, 10 three month memberships during uh, the lives today and tomorrow. So, Ooh, maybe all right. Well, you, you already gave one of those to me. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. And, but it's going to be, yeah, it's, it's amazing, right? So, we'll, I think we'll probably use them more in tomorrow's stream and we'll get okay. people to like, interact and talk all in right. the chat there. And then we'll, we'll give them away um, for tomorrow because I'm just not as prepared to do like a contest unless you can think of something right off the top of your head like i have all the the stuff uh behind me how many how, maybe we can do one today and one tomorrow how many you have total i have five actually no i oh. have ten. Oh wow all right so that that'll hold me up for at least a year and then the remaining <laughs> ones you can give away um yeah we can um I don't know. We uh, we could definitely think of something, um, but let's not let's do it towards the, the yeah. end of yeah. the stream. Let's not do that now. Yeah, no. Make for sure, sure you make sure you tune in to get uh, three free months or for an opportunity to get three free months. Yeah, we'll do like a nice a first to say this or something challenge. Yeah. <clears throat>
All right, so pixel squid again. Look how easy it is just to bring in like just grass now outside of your element. Like I got to make it, I got to match the grass in the backgrounds. So mm -hmm. you can't make it like dramatically big, but you also have to think that it is closer to the camera frame. So you do have to make it a little bit bigger than the grass and blades in the background. Only just to balance like, you know, both uh, the whole field out basically. So I'm going to grab a few of these. And I'm just going to place them up front here. Um, actually, I'm just going to duplicate this uh, same one. So first I'm going to, this is how I name my layers. So we're going to, I just name groups and then I throw all those layers within this group. And then I'll colorize this mm -hmm. green so that I know that it's the grass. And then we'll just now duplicate and throw all these around at the bottom here. Maximiliano is saying, maybe you should play with the blend if to bring the texture of the wall on the sky. Yeah, so we'll, so I, we get to that eventually. So see, as you can see how the, the wall gets through here, you just have to sort of set up some elements prior. What I like to do is I like to uh, lay out all my elements first and then blend. So mm -hmm. I don't, I don't blend in between because then your mind just goes like back and forth constantly and you're, you're all over the place. So um, <laughs> Paco said, check out his shoes on the uh, on the Mac speaker page. I was really happy. I mean, I'm still happy about being in the speaker page, but for a long time, I was right next to Keanu Reeves. And then wow. they start then they start adding people whose last name starts with R as well. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yes, right next to Keanu Reeves. And then that's how you know that you're like a baller because he yeah. he didn't he like vaguely mentioned the Matrix in his bio, you know, like maybe kind of like it was like an afterthought oh yeah by the way i was in the matrix <laughs> oh yeah fyi yeah <laughs> yeah it's just like casually so imagine just casually mentioning that just you're you're shopping at a store oh yeah yeah i was in the matrix no but that's how like deep your resume is that you have so much stuff that Crazy. the matrix is just eh. <laughs> eh. It's, it's all right it was one achievement yeah, just one of my many, 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 many achievements. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know yeah. who else has a um, a um, like a really cool resume in terms of achievements? Uh, pop quiz for the chat. Let me know if you guys know who John Knoll is. John Knoll in the chat. Oh, Let no. me know. John Knoll. Do you know, Sean? Do you know who John Knoll I've, is? I don't know who John Knoll oh, is. Oh, come on. You should know who John Knoll is. Come I, on, chat. I feel like if I saw a piece, then I would I would know. Let's see if anybody in the chat... And don't Google it, because I know somebody's going to be like... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone's going to Google it. Yeah. There's always, there's always a Googler. There's always a Googler. All right, so now since it's kind of looking like grass is growing out of floorboards, that really doesn't make like too much sense, you know, like mm -hmm. you wouldn't really see that. So what I do is I kind of just grab another pixel squid object and I put it underneath and they do like mm -hmm. little grass patches too with dirt along the edges. See, it's nice and yep, yep. So I'll just do that. I'll position it same angle as, as this and I'll just throw it underneath all of the uh, all the grass. And then it kind of creates that dirt edge around um, around my bottom piece here, and, it, and mm -hmm. it kind of like blends it in with the background a little. That bit. looks super cool, super cool. Um, so people are starting to comment in the chat, and yep, uh, Terence got it. Uh, he worked for ILM, and he is one of the creators of Photoshop, one of the people that invented Photoshop. John Knoll um, and his brother uh, uh, Thomas Knoll created Photoshop. I want to say in 1988, 89, something like that and they sold it to Adobe. And um, John Knoll also is one of the creators of Star Wars Rogue One, the movie. So imagine what? having that in your resume, a Star Wars movie <laughs> yeah. and, oh, by the way, I, uh, you know, invented Photoshop and, you know, <laughs> work, invented... worked on a, on a film you might've heard of. <laughs> yeah, just a huge resume. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't even have a resume at that point. I would just have a QR code on a piece of paper. Literally, you wouldn't even you wouldn't need to put references or anything. You just put a That's QR code right. going right to the DVD release or something. You just point out a photo of the <laughs> Photoshop icon, and that's my resume. <laughs> yeah, right there. <laughs> and actually, when you start up Photoshop, if I'm not mistaken, that's the first name that comes up in the splash screen. One of uh, is either the first, yeah, it's either his name or his brother's name that comes up first. 
I always notice the creator of the splash screen in whenever I launch uh, Photoshop. Yep. That's the shout, first name that I recognize. Vanessa. Shout out to Vanessa Rivera. Good oh, friend. Yeah. Yep. Good friend yep. of ours. I don't know where in the world she is. Vanessa travels the world with her, kids and her husband and takes photos of amazing things, creates beautiful composites. They're crazy. Yeah. You should definitely yep. check out that stuff. It's a really good composite artist. Definitely I like how check. like see like that's what I'm missing is just a uh, uh, kids right then I can start photoshopping them and stuff but I'm yeah. 27 so I'm gonna relax on that one for a little bit <laughs> I'm just gonna <laughs> slow down but uh but yeah I mean be, you, you could always travel. photoshop cats you know travel it's with true a cat. I do but I just can't capture a picture of my cat because he's just so like he's so energetic that he will just never sit in front of a screen ever just ever and the contrast, uh, since he has like white fur and black fur, the contrast of my camera could never pick up like his face. It doesn't it never never picks up? It's weird. Uh, but, what cat? You just have one cat? Yeah, yeah. So I just have one cat. His name is uh, Socks, and uh, I base I put him through dog training when I was when I first you, got him. As you should put all your cats into dog training. Yeah, no, and it works, and it works out actually really, really well. You you'd be surprised at um, how well that uh, a cat can become trained out of there. I I mm -hmm. thought that cats could never be trained. I thought mm -hmm. that it could have never happened, or uh, yeah, it was just way too much. But um, yeah, no, it's one, uh, two, two weeks. I'm pretty sure. I think it was yeah, two weeks of of dog school, and uh, he kind of barks now. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> So I saw you blend, blending the grass into the ladder. How are you doing that? So uh, so I'm kind of like, a, a, again, lazy. Um, so I basically, the one of the other brush packs that I have is a grass brush pack. So okay. I use a lot of grass in my pieces and I find that that, you know, it creates a soft kind of like loving vibe and you see grass everywhere anyway. So someone can instantly connect to the piece. Um, but so what I did was I basically just went to the layer mask that we did kind of at the start. So if you mm -hmm. uh, disable it again, all back and then enable it, gone. I basically just went to the eraser, uh, set my opacity up to 100, made sure that they were both at 100 and then went to my uh, grass. Like, and you see the, uh, <laughs> it's like a, a layout already. It's already set up in a grass kind of pattern and you can just kind of erase now. You just click erase and it blends the bottom of that ladder in. With, nice. Uh, it creates like uh, some short grass. Uh, what I'm not sure what it's called. Grass blades, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. By the way, I want to remind everybody about the design feedback. Make sure that you go into Discord to submit your daily creative challenge, which you guys work with me about half an hour or so ago. We did hair swaps in Photoshop. So make sure that you submit your work. Sean and I will be reviewing that very soon. Oh, yeah. I'm super excited for that. <laughs> I, uh, you did a hairdo challenge today, right? Hairdo challenge. That's yeah. right. I See, I wish it was that easy during like the times when it was hard to get a haircut. I wish I could just use, uh, use Photoshop, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. That would have been so great. Or like a like a filter, like on Zoom, you know, everybody's in Zoom <laughs> yeah. calls now. It's just like it just redoes your hair. Yeah, somebody joins in and they're like Shrek, and you're like, whoa. All <laughs> right. So I'm just gonna see how it's kind of like dark down here at the bottom of the brush. Oh yeah, that's another thing that I uh, did. So I'm gonna show you that quickly. So the the um, the top of this wasn't always blue. I basically just clip mask. A, the blue brush into it. I didn't add anything special. It's just on normal and the opacity is mm -hmm. down a little bit. So nothing too special. I just put that this same blue, whatever sky that you use, you would grab this exact blue and put it underneath here. And then a light, mm -hmm. the lighter tone, you would put it on top only nice. because the lighting in this room is, uh, is going down. So nice. And that, and, then and thanks so much, Cody Bear, for posting the link in the chat for the Daily Creative Challenges and for Discord. So make sure that you click on Beautiful. those links. And the Discord link is also up on screen now. Uh, and that'll be in about an hour, the design feedback. So make sure that you submit your work. Beautiful. So I'm just going to grab um, the soft brush again, and I'm just going to kind of 
uh, oh yeah, so my strength is, uh, oh wait, no, this is my blur brush. That's what I, this, this bar at the top keeps my, uh, sometimes whenever I click the, uh, the fast preset up here, it'll go to mm -hmm. a different, different brush again. And I always, mm -hmm. I always bounce between like the yep. eraser and the blur tool. So sometimes I quickly hit that one and it goes right to the blur tool again. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do opacity, put that down and then just nice. Just a just nice little show. swipe. Yep. Yeah. Just a nice little swipe is all you need. Maybe you can put it at uh, soft light there. Perfect. And then that would kind of create like you know you're more th it's more three D now. It's looking like it's actually like pressed up against the wall. It's looking nice. So now we got to put that uh, the elk in there. We had a huge discussion on uh, our Discord about if this was an elk or a um, or a deer, but uh, it's an elk. It's definitely not. okay. Let me just grab it here. Um, it might be in my office. Here we go. Yeah, there's so many elements on Pixel Squid, so that's why I have them like different libraries and different like folders and stuff. So, but sometimes my elements go in like you can put them in multiple folders too so it's kind of cool how you can have like the same element across all these different projects so you can basically just set up your uh pixel squid to what your what project you're currently working on nice so this is an elk correct yeah yeah all yeah. right i believe so this is a you guys i i'm i'm assuming that it 100 is i think that like uh deers are are different i guess in some way I sure. <laughs> I yeah, I'm not much of a deer and elk <laughs> expert. I don't know much. I'm just gonna Are move up the the grass back here just to give it some more kind of land to work with. Nice. Perfect. There you go. And this is all clip mass still, so we can just move it wherever we want. It's not gonna escape like the edges or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. good old non-destructive editing. And nice. I'm just going to boost the quality here. It always imports my pixel squid objects at the lowest quality. So I can actually like put place them before, uh, you know, m boosting that quality and having Photoshop like slow down a little tad bit. Mm -hmm. It's only because you're using big elements. So Judith wrote, I don't think that's an elk. Let us know what you think it is, Judith. <laughs> yeah. What is it? <laughs> Whoa. Where did the deer came from? It came from pixel squid. Right over here. <laughs> There it is, pixel squid. So how should we, we should probably give one away soon. Yeah. Um, do you want people to contact you or like, how are you gonna, you know, like- Yeah, we you ask... could just, yeah, message me on Behance here because I also do live streams on here as well. It's the easiest way to contact me and then I'll, and then we'll, I'll just- Okay, so well, whoever the winner is could contact you and you can verify the name since it'll be the same account. Yep. Excellent, excellent. So I'll, I'll let you want me to think of a question, or do you want to think? Yeah, of one? go go right ahead if you if you how, possibly how, can right now. How difficult or how easy should we make this? Ooh. And is it Photoshop related? Ooh. Uh, you can make it. Uh, let's. Can it? Can you make it so that like somebody can't just Google the answer? Like, do you know any questions or anything like that that wouldn't be a Google thing, or at least not easily Google? Yeah, at least not easily Googled. Um, let me think of one. Huh. <laughs> everything's on Google. It's really? Every, yeah, I know that's everything. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like how fast can you Google this? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Sometimes I just get people to type out the full alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do in our Discord. Um, we'll say, first person to type out the full alphabet wins. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Can't do that one now. Everybody's already got a pre-type problem. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. <laughs> Eddie wrote, "I would have to Google it." <laughs> I would have to Google that. <laughs> the alphabet. I have no idea what the alphabet is. Hmm. Let me see. Something good. I'll, I'll think about it uh, about something in a minute. Yeah, that so, question of uh, the creator of Photoshop was pretty good. If you can find yeah. some 
Something like that. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. Okay. Ooh, so now I'm I have. Make... I have a question. I have a question. Yeah. Are, are we ready for this? Are we ready? Are we ready? Because I don't know if this is. Oh man, it might be Google Bolo. All right. <laughs> so. <laughs> so wh whoever whoever types the answer first, correct? <laughs> yeah. Nate, give me the name of at least one of the co-writers of the very first book on Photoshop. Oh. There's two of them. And actually, I forgot the name of, of the second, so I'm not going to... So, I guess, I guess the one that's in my head. <laughs> so, the one that's in my head, <laughs> no. Yeah, guess exactly the, <laughs> what's in my head right now. Yeah. Okay. So now and I'm that, gonna. Oh, oh, we got it, Michelle. Michelle got it. First answer. Perfect. Send me a message on Discord. I'll give you. I think it's three months of Pixel Squid. Three months of Pixel Squid. There you go. Send me a message after the stream, though. I can't do it there. Yeah. <laughs> it, and uh, his name is Bert Monroy. Um, yeah, Bert Monroy is 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 the one of the co-writers of the very first book on Photoshop and he's the, the most well known out of the two, which is why I couldn't remember the other gentleman's name. And if I remember correctly, it came out like in 91, 92. I, I actually have that book. And you, I mean, if you read it today, obviously the tools and, and stuff like that are gonna be in different, so different. areas. Yeah. But in terms of like how channels work and things like that, I mean, it's all still relevant to this day. So it's, it's a mm -hmm. very good book. I'm just yeah, but that's right. Quality. Yeah. Um, Nice. Cool, cool. Yeah, it was uh I, I asked right away. I was like, let me give away a Pixel Squid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please. We talk so, about it so much. I use it all the time, right? Might as well. Oh, Michelle said she uh learned who Bert was from me. Yeah, I, I talk wow. about Bert a lot. He is definitely my Photoshop here. Actually, a lot of stuff in Photoshop was designed by him, like the uh you're doing grass right now, like the grass grass brush tool. Uh um the grass brush, I should say, um, he, he designed it. And a lot of the stuff that's in it now was, um, Oh, like the, like the old, like the first one that was, yeah. Attached yep. With yep. It. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. That one. And he is Photoshop user number six, oh Photoshop user God. number six. So you can imagine how long he's been using Photoshop. Really, oh, yeah. really, really talented artists. You can look him up at bertmonroy.com. So what we're going to do here now is um, this is like you got to kind of start adding your own blues uh, on the background a little bit more just to uh, make it look more painted rather than um, just a picture pasted on the inside of a, of a brush. So what I do is I grab kind of like some lighter blues, just using the eyedropper, just go down, you know, just make it nice. as rough as possible, just showing that like it's kind of like mer merging and mixing the paints here. We'll do Super that. cool. And then we'll do some green down here just to. The Bob yeah, is asking, how is your day, Jesus and Sean? It's been great. Um, I woke up super early. Um, I, for some reason, I always get like a little bit um, anxious before I go live. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think that's why I woke up super early today mm -hmm. like at seven o'clock. So that's pretty early for me because I work for myself. So I, I normally sleep in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I was just, uh, it's, it hasn't been too bad. I've just been uh, editing all, all this morning um, mm -hmm. and then uh, editing now and I'll probably be editing after again. <laughs> Yep. Uh, now that you mentioned, you know, you being self-employed, I'm wondering, um, people in the chat, let us know what you, why you're um, into the Adobe applications. Are you a professional yeah. photographer, designer, student, um, just a hobbyist? What, you know, type of Adobe user are you? I'm curious to see what we have. Maybe we have a lot of designers. Maybe we have a lot of photographers. I don't know. Let us know. Yeah, there's there's so many genres of art. Like even if you produce music. Yep. There you go. Even... So... Where do you get your ideas for your artwork, Sean? Oh, my head is so full of randomness that that's basically where it comes from. Um I 
when I was like, you know, I'm always overthinking things. I'm always underthinking things. And like, it's just from my anxiety, really. So it just kind of keeps my mind um, constantly thinking of random ideas, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, it just fills it up. Uh, I also um, am in on Discord all the time. I'm in the Photoshop Discord talking to new artists. They inspire me all the time, too. It's just who you talk with and and all that, right? Once you start talking to other creatives and you get you start getting really involved with a lot of things and that's what starts inspiring your next piece is all those nice. life memories those experiences yeah so this piece is about like you know um i'm a i'm a designer and i'm like painting the beauty like back into the world again right mm, so like you're beautiful. you're really drawing the, the nature back in nature is a huge thing for me i love nature so that's why I do a, a lot of nature pieces. Mm -hmm. um, but super uh, cool. Yeah, you just got a little story. So you're a designer. Uh, Juliana is a designer slash illustrator. Leah, freelance graphic designer and creative. We have Dana, who studied graphic design in high school, wanting to start my their yeah. visual arts studies. Uh, Badal is a student. Carl is a designer. Amy is a graphic designer. Ferry is a student. Clever is a painter. Wait, uh, oh wait, no. The, <laughs> wait, yeah, that painter. Oh, <laughs> okay. I don't, this must be obviously related to something else, but Clever wrote, yeah, that painter is dumb, but I still hire him for uh, his other skills. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Brian um, is into videos and um, the Bob is here for um, an art club to support his boy, oh. Sean. <laughs> oh yeah, the art club. That's our Discord server. Nice. That's the, yeah, that's our like, so this is like the one that we kind of, we're like the hype squad of Adobe, you know? We're just okay. the, we're all, so we kind of like, so around Adobe Max, we're all gonna gather there and then go and kind of, uh, you know, we're gonna gather everybody so that we all know what's going on. And if anybody has any questions, we're gonna kind of like answer them, help people out on that Discord. Nice. Um, because you can't really, we found that, that, you know, you can't really gather on like Instagram or anything like that. It doesn't really, it doesn't work out that well, you know? Right, right. So, um, so yeah, Discord's just been a perfect place. And that's, uh, that's what we're gonna be using this year for Adobe Max. Super cool. Yeah, Brian is a designer, Christy, graphic designer, uh, Badal animation and visual effects student. Michelle is a full-time Photoshop student at home learning by myself. That's how most of us learn. Um, oh, yeah. um, fun fact, I got a C in my one and only Photoshop class in college. <laughs> um, hey, you know what, C's, C's better than D. It, definitely and, <laughs> and twice as better than an f cody yeah. Bear, freelancer illustrator and adobe live mod heather is a graphic designer uh steve is a rocket scientist brain surgeon superhero just call me a bookaroo yeah. that kind of sounds like tony stark when he's describing yeah. it you know you know what he, when he says yeah. like when captain america tells him like take away the suit what are you he goes uh billionaire playboy philanthropist or something <laughs> yeah um, i just list off a bunch of things <laughs> yeah uh, i discovered behance during the spring nice oh viola's a bar owner executive assistant and designer slash writer cool so we have a lot of people who are designers not i was expecting a few more photographers but not everybody here's the designers that's awesome or most people here are designers yeah, I didn't see that many. Normally, everybody's a photographer nowadays, though. Yeah. I mean, not as professional with all the retouching and stuff, but uh, that's I did study photography. I went to college for it. Oh, um, cool. And then I realized that uh, that the editing part is definitely uh, definitely good and better in the long run because you can edit everybody's imagery then. Right. So you didn't need to uh, you didn't always need to specifically have a camera. Somebody else could be going out and doing the shoot mm -hmm. for you. And then all you need is just all the files after. Yeah. <laughs> so I went right into editing and it's, uh, it's just worked out a lot more for me nice. in the long run. We have uh, Paco in the chat saying he's a photographer and videographer and an nice. excellent one at that. Cody Bear hopefully can uh, share his Instagram in the chat. He's got some really cool photos. He takes a lot of 
nature uh, photos and time lapses are super, super cool. Um, I want to host Paco on one of these Adobe Lives, and I already spoke to uh, Paco. You would know Samantha about it, so hopefully we can get Paco on here doing some showing of his skills. He is super, super awesome at that. We have um, Jen is an enthusiast photographer. Nice. Oh, cool. Michelle uses mostly um, her own photos to create her composites. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's definitely uh, if, if you do that, then uh, what, what's that one? Eric, is it Eric Johnson? Is that? Yeah, yeah, that does. Johansson, uh, yeah, Eric Johansson. Johansson. Yeah, he, this is basically like something that he would uh, mm -hmm. do is something along the lines of this. But that's he's also uh, he does his own photography, travels the world, everything does that. Yeah. On He's side. one of the, uh, I don't know if it's the first, but one of the very first um, compositing type of um, like well-known compositing artist, I would say. Yeah. I, I think it started becoming well-known, like I want to say in the early 2000s is when I first discovered him at least. And, and when he started gaining popularity, he's the only person that I know at least that's done a TED talk on Photoshop. Yeah, like... Uh... Well, even when I was like young and learning, I, I he would always be like the reference that everybody would reference their work to. Uh, mm -hmm. He just has a lot of a lot of really sharp pieces, and I think yeah, it's definitely because he literally goes out and and does all of his assets a hundred percent himself. Wow, yeah, and and not only a hundred percent himself, but mm -hmm. some of these take a lot of work to shoot. You know what I mean? It's not just like, Oh, I took yeah. a photo of a road or something. It's like the really involved photography sh uh, shoots mm -hmm. that also tie into this idea or sketch or something that he's got in his mind. And, and, you know, he's, he's very good at what he does. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw a bush on either side, just kind of wide in here. Might as well. Right. So easy just Why to add an element not? like that. Right. Just, would have taken me forever to cut around that bush. And and this is the the reason why I think Pixel Squid is great um, for especially for elements like this, right? Because you might be thinking, well, when when am I going to need an element, right? Like or fear <laughs> yeah. or whatever this is. But like <laughs> yeah. a bush, I feel like it's it's something that you would need in a lot of situations. Or the grass, like you had it here, and it's it might not be your main element but it's definitely an element that you can add to your composite to enhance it. And you don't have to spend hours masking it or, you know, doing any of that stuff. Yeah. And a bush would take for like so long because of the longer, leaves. Yeah. Longer than, than it should. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Perfect. And then I'm just going to throw one over here just to merge it all, all together. Nice. Just throw it behind that ladder there quickly. This one has to be flipped though, because the lighting I'm going to make, um, I'm going to make coming from right here because mm -hmm. I can notice that he's got a lot of light on his yep. elbow here. So I'm, I'm not going to play around with that. I'm just going to leave it how it is and work with it. Otherwise, it could take me a little while to reverse it. Mm -hmm. Jen is sharing a tip in the chat, if you don't want to go down the subscription route for Pixel Squid, you can also buy items a la carte. It's cheaper mm -hmm. in the long run if you only need a few assets. Yeah, if you need like a tree or something, and it's cool because you don't even need like like the plugin right on your uh, on here. Like I just use it because it instantly imports, but you can mm -hmm. get all the assets right directly off of right, the website right. in PNG right. format. So let's, uh, yeah, so now I'm going to just blend this guy in here because he's not matching at all, but I'm going to do my lighting over here first so that I can determine what he needs. He or she or whatever the elk wants to classify themselves as. <laughs> let's go. What, does the banana actually do anything or does it just chill there? Uh, when you click on it, you'll get a drone drop off for lunch. Like, you know, just a drone from Adobe San Jose comes off and drops you off some lunch. <laughs> yeah. 
And by the way, if you want to get rid of it, you have to hold, um, are you on, you're on a Mac, right? Yeah. You nope. have to hold, uh, oh, you're on Windows? Yeah. Yeah, you have to hold Alt on Windows and click on Done on that same uh, menu. I'm just going to keep it there. Banana Gang. <laughs> yeah, Banana Gang. Okay, so this is the layer underneath. So I basically just duplicate it, bring it down again. Doesn't mm -hmm. have to be like anything too, too, too fancy. Yep. And I just want to remind everybody about the design feedback that's coming up in about 38 oh, yeah. minutes. So make sure that you submit your work into Discord. I know Cody Bear has been posting the link in the chat. So make sure that you click on that and submit your work. I can actually see some submissions already. So Beautiful. If you want Sh uh, Sean and I to look over these submissions, make sure that you submit yours because we want to check out what you do. And actually, I see a lot of people submitting older daily creative challenges. Um, so maybe we'll talk about some of the old ones as well. Cool. And now I'm just going to do all the lighting for this little guy right here. So you um, apply the highlights by selecting a layer, setting it to the overlay blending mode and painting with white. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, basically nice. this is just a white layer overlay, 100%. And uh, yeah, for some reason, I'm actually working with um, 100% today. Normally I'm working with around like 50% mm -hmm. or even lower. Like I actually like to go to 5% normally. Mm. I know it takes a while, but I'm patient. Yep. Nice. You definitely have to be patient when you're doing compositing because it could, <laughs> it, it could some things just take forever. You know, it's just oh, yeah. the nature of the business. Yep. Com compositing could like either it's either could take you two hours or it could take you 20. And, and sometimes it's crazy how like you accidentally do something right fast and you know like you're the first thing that you try looks fantastic and you're like oh my god i can't believe it it was that easy <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then you try to replicate it and it's never as good no matter how yeah. much time you spend on it yeah never gonna turn out the same ever again yeah <laughs> darn it <laughs> yeah i've had that a few times where i've tried to design the exact same composite over again even this one's not gonna look exactly the same as the right. other one It'll look a little bit off but right it's similar idea right like Whoa, yeah. yeah, it looks like way different. But yeah, you just add my uh, my good old LUT here and that should change everything back to normal again. You have a, a saved LUT, is that what it is? Or your own? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, I designed my own like way, way, way back in the day and I still use them <laughs> like just to kind of add a little contrast or something to my imagery or uh, nice. just balance out the colors a little bit more. I, they're just kind of like experimental. I just play around mm -hmm. with them. They don't always work, but um, they worked in this image nicely. So I'm yeah. going to keep it like that. Nice. So what's a LUT? A LUT is basically just like uh, all my... Uh, so if I keep doing um, all these adjustment layers up here on mm -hmm. on a stock image is basically just compiling all those together and then mm -hmm. i can import it on every project that i use but um it's basically like a, a filter a color filter mm -hmm. but the good part about it is that you can use it on um all of adobe's software yep so if i use it for video like if you like this color then you're like hey i want to do a video like this now you can because mm -hmm. it has this color saved to it I'm not sure what else you can do with LUTs. So I know that people in video use them a lot more intense than I do. Right. Jen is saying, uh, I'm a LUT nut. <laughs> a LUT nut. Yeah, LUT nut. that's, uh, I could definitely say that uh, I'm addicted to them as well. I use them all the time. They're uh, they're really great. Um, especially if, uh, if, I'm not sure if anybody has ever seen like my Instagram or anything like that, but I use LUTs to keep the control of my coloring across mm -hmm. all of my pictures so that's that's how they kind of look like the same all the time mm -hmm. is is that concept right there nice yep so, all right so now i'm gonna do all the shadowing underneath here and if you want to make your own lot so you have to do is just you know uh 
create a design with whatever adjustment layers you want and then go into file export and select lookup tables and you can export your LUT file. And that's right, uh, Christy, especially in After Effects and Premiere Pro. And we have Sean's Instagram in the chat. So make sure that you click on that and give him a follow. Yeah, I've been uh, up in my game a little bit. I've been kind of like working on a website for myself. And Ooh, I've, yeah, I've nice. Been, yeah, I actually have it right here. <laughs> I had it there ready, to, but this is kind of yeah, what I'm working on right now. It's got a link to my lives, my Discord, everything. It's all nice. on Nice. So somebody has 30 seconds, which is the one link they need to click on now and check out. SeanRiken.live. There you go. As everything. Everything. Beautiful. Everything. Well, not not everything, but we don't have Uber Eats yet. <laughs> <laughs> don't have a kitchen. Um, all right. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger because the perspective is a little bit off on them. Talking about Uber Eats, here's an idea for Adobe. While we're presenting and, you know, I'm hosting now, you're working, there should be like a button somewhere on behalf where they, <laughs> oh they could God. just order us Uber Eats. <laughs> uh, so like, hey, you look a little thirsty, Sean. Here, let me let me order, order you a Coke. <laughs> let me <laughs> you know? order you something. <laughs> yeah, and then like some guy just knocks and then we can go and pick it up and, some you know, say, hey. Walks, walks yeah. in here. Like, hey. hey yeah. Th yeah, thanks, Steve, for the Coke. <laughs> 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 Here's three free months of Pixel Squid. <laughs> yeah, just start uh, gathering an audience on the outside, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be funny. Just some random dude just showing up. Whoa. I wouldn't know what to say. Jan wrote, I'll put the link in the description. Every YouTuber, but they forget to do it. That's happened to me so many times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always say that. I'm always just like, check out the link after the stream. And then I realize yeah, there's like, no link. Darn it, I didn't put anything in the stream link. <laughs> it's looking pretty good. Not yeah, gonna... not... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, I was just going to edit some of like the shadow work down here. But what were yeah. you going to say? I was going to say, I really like the dirt on the panels there at the bottom. I mean, you didn't have to mask any of that and it just looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to. I'm going to do a little bit of light, like leaks here and there on the top of the grass mm -hmm. here just to bring in the lighting a little bit more. But uh, all the shadow, like all the shadow work is completely guessed because in this sense, like it's the lighting is so unrealistic that you almost can't match it because the sun right. would technically be behind this wall. Right. But then there's so, obviously a light source in the room. Yeah, there's a light source in the room and everything. So I'm going to try. Maybe we could put like a lamp or something here to show like a little bit more light coming from this mm -hmm. direction to balance both scenes out. But uh, yeah, we're just going to I'm just going to work on the shadowing under here a little bit. The Bob is asking, it started raining over here in Kent. What about you over there in Manchester, Jesus? It was raining when I walked into the studio. I haven't been outside for over an hour now, maybe even two hours, and I assume it's still raining. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> raining just... in England? <laughs> <laughs> and... We have 30 minutes, everybody, 30 minutes for the design feedback. So make sure you submit your work into Discord. The link is in the chat. You can scroll up. I'm sure Cody Bear will paste it again there shortly. But make sure that you submit your work so that we can check out the hair swaps, the new hairstyles that you're placing on your photos. And I'm starting to see, <laughs> I'm starting to see more and more of them on here. Nice. <laughs> Ted has right. submitted a couple, so we'll definitely check them out, Ted. Now I'm just going to do the highlights in the grass here and there, just give some light spots. How do you decide how big your canvas is? I always design eight and a half by 11. Okay. Any particular reason? Uh, yeah. So um, Instagram actually s really supports the eight and a half by 11 nicely. Like it all, mm -hmm. all kind of um, 
it fills the entire screen. So you you won't get somebody else's piece in there or somebody else's post if you right. post and they're scrolling down. Yours literally nice. takes up their whole screen. Nice. So that's that's why I work in eight and a half by eleven. Super cool. And it's a default like printing size too, right? So I could put yep. it on like I could print it at a print print shop or something if I wanted to. Put it mm -hmm. on a shirt. Super right, cool. So basically what I was doing back there was I just grabbed a white brush, 14% opacity, and I just set the layer to overlay and I just drew over the grass a little bit. I'm gonna erase right here because it went on the ladder, but this is just a layer over top of everything else. Mm -hmm. It's like my uh, burn and dodge layer basically, but just I didn't use the 12% uh, fill with gray. Nice. Super cool. I mean, that simple layer is just basically white on it with overlay and it makes a huge, huge difference. Huge difference. Yeah, look at it. The grass looks so dead before and now it looks yep. like magical. Yeah. Super cool. Let's bring us all into camera raw now. Nice. Have you thought of a, a question to ask the chat for another giveaway? Ooh, no, I haven't even been thinking. I, I wasn't right. even thinking at all, but um, hmm. <laughs> we could probably give up some away to uh, some of the creative challenges from earlier too. Oh, that's right. Okay, cool. Easily. Cool. So make sure that you submit. I don't know how we're gonna decide who who gets it from the daily creative challenge, but <laughs> we'll yeah, figure that true. out. Yeah, that's true. I guess it, this one is an eight and a half by eleven ratio. <gasps> Ooh. There we go. Uh, no, that's still not eight and a half by eleven, but whatever. We'll we'll keep we'll, it like that. We'll pretend that it is. This one will go on Behance and Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it in. Uh, I normally make like a uh, uh, um, a project kind of uh, uh, guide at the end. So I'll, and I attach all my live streams, all the information, and everything into one Behance project. So mm -hmm. follow me if you uh, <laughs> want to check that out. I like how Steve is just throwing out answers, even though we haven't asked a question. <laughs> He's like 40. <laughs> 42, blue. <laughs> Let us know in the chat what's your default or your go-to um, design aspect ratio and or pixel yeah. dimensions. I usually do 1920 by 1080 because I do a lot of stuff on video. So then I know I'm gonna have to make a thumbnail out of it or it's gonna be displayed on video somewhere. So it's it's that's the my go-to default size. Remember to drink some water, Sean. True. I do need to drink some water, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank the you. The Bob for that. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Water alerts are, are the greatest thing. I literally have my watch telling me all the time to breathe and stuff. Like technology just <laughs> Wait, tells me everything. So you're going to forget to breathe and just collapse? Or... <laughs> yeah, one day just like, <laughs> I'm not wearing my watch. How would I know? <laughs> Steve wrote, beer is 99% water. We're going to have to look that up. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but maybe it is. I'd I don't say, know. <laughs> I'd say Coors would be like 100% water. All I right. like what Sean is... Uh, Michelle is, is saying, I like what Sean is doing. I'm present, uh, presently creating different composites, figuring, figuring animals on a created landscape with bits of human traces, example trails, but no humans. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, insight on looking at my, uh, at my work. It's kind of cool hearing what like other people like see from it. You know, because as an artist, like you're never going to like fully understand what you're 100 percent like creating for others. Like you're never yeah. gonna, like somebody else could make a story out of this, and like it, it might not be my story. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's it's super cool hearing like um, you know that people are inspired by that stuff. So thank you, I appreciate that. Yep, and we have um, Evan uses square. Danis also uses the one to one ratio, a square. Um, Jan also uses square for, um, let's see what Cody Vare also does square or eight by 10. So a lot of squares, um, fairy four by five. Cool. 
Ferry wants to know if you add clarity to your work. I I do I it depends on the piece really. So for this one, I did add a little bit of clarity. Like it's mm -hmm. like plus five, or actually plus six, but let's go plus five. I don't go like I wouldn't just go like a hundred <laughs> like that because I think that that made it go from like a nice friendly vibe down to like something darks about to happen. Yeah. Right? So that's why I just keep it light, keep it nice and easy. Don't like I don't over overdo that much because it's a step-by-step -step process. So if you do like all these enhancements like once right at the start and, and boost it up like and every which way, it's hard to go back. Mm -hmm. But it's easier to step, like slowly step your way into a, uh, a an edit. Ooh, I just thought of a good question. <laughs> What's your, what, what, it's, what is it? It's gonna be a bit silly. I'm gonna write down a number in a piece of paper. <laughs> And see who can guess it. I'm never on a beat. <laughs> I mean, like, all right, if you get this number, you get three free months of <laughs> <laughs> of pixel squid. Yeah, I don't know. Or, or guess my most reached piece. Like, out of all the pieces that you see on my Instagram, what one is the one that went like the furthest? The viral ever? or the the most, most the views. most the all biggest right. picture. It's it's very obvious. So you have, they, have, they have to go into your Instagram and check is yep. what you're saying? Yeah. All yeah. right. Go and and then the out. person that writes it first is the person that... The, that will get it, yeah. That will get Okay, so that's the question. That's the question. Perfect. All right, first, first. I like how people yeah. are already putting numbers down even though we didn't agree that... <laughs> yeah, we didn't even say <laughs> they're, they're, just, they're just putting numbers just to be the first one. <laughs> we didn't even put a... We did, it's not even a number. I don't even yeah. number my pieces, I don't think. Do, no, wait, but you know, you know how I said, guess, you know, I'll write a number down on a piece of paper. Oh, so. yeah. Everybody's just going great. Go listen to Jesus right now. Look at my Instagram. Go, to look, <laughs> go look at your Instagram, see which is the most um, liked or shared post. Is that the uh, most? Yeah, most uh, biggest, the biggest piece that uh, well, had. I, like... I don't know which one that is. So you're going to have to look at the yeah. chat at some point. And... <laughs> No, it's not the so Sonic one or the watermelon one or the latest one. All right, there we it's, go. So it's, not the. There, no, don't, don't, tell him, don't tell them. Don't tell them. It's, it's down. down. There you go. All right, it's not in the. It's not on. You know, it's, like it's above the recent. fold. It's not above the fold. You have to keep scrolling. Oct I'll read them okay. out to you. Octopus in the toilet. Nope. All right. That was a good one though. So right now I'm just using a um, iris blur. So uh, basically you just go to filter, uh, blur gallery, and then it's right there. And I'm just setting kind of like the focal points like really small in here so that it still blurs around the edges a little bit. But I'm gonna move this up so that you can still see the quality of that. Oh, I think somebody got it. Is it the Stan Lee one? Yep, Stan Lee yeah. one. So yeah. uh, Dana, Stan Lee, you got it. Make sure that you message Sean privately and he'll get you the three months. I'll get you one, three months, yeah. Three, three months, months. Pixel, pixel squid, yeah. Pixel squid, there you go. And other people are now uh, typing Stan Lee, uh, but the first person was, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Danis, is that who it was? Yeah, Danis was the first person who typed up Stan Lee. When I read it, I remember you talking about that last time you and I did a, a stream together. Yeah, one of my biggest piece. I didn't even, I didn't use like, hashtags or anything because i like i just wanted to dedicate a piece to stan lee um mm -hmm. but i didn't use hashtags nothing and all of a sudden that that piece went like on reddit everywhere all over the place it's like nice. crazy yeah that one is uh i don't know it's nuts all right so we're uh i'm just gonna redo that um so what are the rules sean where do they, where do they have to message you behance is that where yeah, just message me on Behance. Okay. Um, if if you personally know me, then you can message me wherever. Like if you already they know They can come to your house. Else. You can knock on yeah, your front yeah, door. Just, just, yeah, just walk on over. Yeah, just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you live in Canada. Just yeah, stop on by. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll cook dinner for them. <laughs> yeah, pro that's a Canadian thing probably, right? So we got to yeah. you have to treat every guest with, with 100% respect. Nice. 
And again, a reminder for the design feedback that's in about 20 minutes, make sure you submit your work into Discord. That's where we're going to review the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, which I hosted today and we worked on hair replacements. So it should be a fun one. Good old hair replacement, yeah. I think I've had to fix my hair a few times in Photoshop, I'm not gonna lie. Wait, what? I, I've, I've had to fix my hair a few times oh. in Photoshop, yeah. <laughs> I, where I take a selfie and I'm like, ah, oh, just it's not flowing right. <laughs> oh my God. Let us know in the chat if you ever had a Photoshop yourself for like a selfie or something and what yeah, you like did. A, like a resume picture or something. Uh, you know? For anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think what I, because I know I've done it, but I'm trying to think of like something. I think. I Photoshopped a mustache across <laughs> my face one time that said yeah. like real man. <laughs> right? Oh in, my like, God. In typography, but it was made out of like mustache hairs. And it was for Movember, right? So I was challenging all my friends to like Movember to raise money and everything. Oh man. And, uh, and yeah, I think, I think that was, yeah. One of my, uh, weird, weirder edits of myself, I'd say. One of the, one of the most random ones that I did was, uh, I was traveling through Spain and I was in, uh, Sevilla, I think I was in, and I was at a, at a like coffee shop and I was working on a composite that I had to submit for, um, I don't know if people in the chat know Karen Alsop, who every year she has this really cool compositing, um, project where she takes photos of children in uh, children's hospitals throughout oh. the world. And then different artists will work in a composite to place the child with Santa or whatever their favorite character wow, is or whatever. that's really cool. Super cool. Um, but uh, yeah, check out Karen Alsop at storyart.com, I believe is her website. And I've helped her out for the last two years. And anyways, I was, I was in, in Spain and I'm working in this coffee shop on this composite and then she messages me and says hey I need a photo of you working on the composite like oh my god I haven't done my hair in god knows how long and I haven't shaved <laughs> so I had to like liquefy my hair to make it look decent. <laughs> oh my and god. then just like remove some facial hair so I'd look presentable <laughs> oh my god. but that was probably the last time that I did that um we have some questions um let me see Will we be able to download the Keith Herring brushes after the session while rewatching it, or is it for a limited time, Sean? I believe it's for a, like, you'll be able to download the brushes right after this stream. That's for sure. I know that, but I do believe that they are available for a limited time. So I would totally hop on that, like, ASAP. Um, but yeah, all you have to do is just click add to your library as soon as you go to the link. And then I think you keep those though that brush pack just in your photoshop forever i'm pretty sure mm -hmm. and also um, you can save brushes into your libraries as well so you can have um your favorite brushes in a library and use them from anywhere well that's what that's what it does anyways you can't uh you oh, can't okay. download so the abr file it, oh it, so it's a library mm -hmm. asset got it mm -hmm. got it mm -hmm. okay cool um what does clarity basically do to the image any idea uh yeah i would say that it sharpens or it, or it deepens the contrast and shadows, I'd say. Like, mm -hmm. and it really boosts like the highlights. So it would mm -hmm. be boosting highlights and darkening shadows, but touching nothing else. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that that's probably what it, what it's doing. The, um, the technical term, the, what it's doing technically behind the scene is adding contrast to edge pixels, which includes oh, adding yeah. adding contrast, adding highlights and shadows, as, as you were saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, the texture slider um, adds contrast to mid frequency information, if I remember correctly. Um, and actually a fun fact, uh, Matt Klaskowski, who was on the stream here, well, I wanna say almost like six months ago, maybe longer, he was saying, and that was news to me, that the way that Adobe came up with that tool is that they were looking for a skin smoothing slider, but then they realized that it's actually, you know, doing the opposite would add really good texture so yeah. that's how the texture slider came about wow i didn't know that but that's what i learned from matt kleskowski excellent photographer check him out at mattk.com yeah it's all it's got a bunch of uh you can almost do 
You can almost do clarity through the high pass sharpen. It would almost work out like the exact same yeah. way, but thinner. Well, so the the um, high pass, the, so filter other um, high pass is what you're talking about. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly the opposite of what the filter blur Gaussian blur is doing. So if you add like you know two pixels of high pass and two filter and two pixels of Gaussian blur, you can technically put those two layers on top of each other, which uh, with I forget what blending mode like hard light or something, and then you'll get your original image back. So with this filter, you're removing low frequency information and with the blur you're removing high frequency information i know it's all technical doesn't mean anything but that's what it's that's what's going on behind the scenes um i love the high pass sharpen it's great yeah really really good way of adding uh sharpening to the to an image i'm gonna put the link there because michelle was talking about it for the uh children's thing that we did um Yeah, so when you when I share this link, um, you should be able to see. I'm just gonna put it in the chat, and in the chat now is that link to the um, storyart.com website for Karen Olsop, and you can see some of the composites that um, a bunch of artists, not just me, completed for these kids during Christmas. I work, like I said, I worked on one last year and then the year before. Wow. But yeah, you can check them all, that, all, all out there. Yeah, just bookmark that. Definitely want to check that out. That's a really cool project idea. Yeah, really, it, really cool. Yeah, like getting involved like that with your art is uh, it's really, mm -hmm. it's really inspiring, you know? Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, I've done the same kid, uh, his name is Corey, two years in a row and, um, he is about maybe, 11, I want to say he's about 11 now. Um, and yeah, I've, I've done a composite for him twice now. Cool. I was actually, um, I haven't been to, the, to Karen's website, I guess, since last um, December, December. So I was trying to figure out where the one that I did was so I could show you guys in the chat. But I'm having trouble finding it. But it's all there. You guys can just um, navigate through the website and you can see um, the work that was created by different artists, um, people that you might know, Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think if Lisa Carney did one. Uh, maybe Lisa Carney did one as well. I don't recall exactly. But yeah, check it out. Cool. Hmm. Hmm, I think I'm going to add like a fire hydrant here. Nice. Actually, no, I'm going to add a vinyl player. Super cool. It's got like some nice, I think that lighting actually almost matches the composite. Yeah, the lighting's pretty close. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out because I know they had a like a special page for it, not just on uh, Karen's website, but I mean, I'm sure it's there. You guys could check it out. Cool. Does anyone here in the chat still listen to records like an actual record player? I haven't I, I haven't I used to have a record player. Really? I bought it for a dollar at an auction. Nice. And uh... I ended up uh, moving around so much. And when I moved from one place to another, I wasn't able to, we couldn't fit it in the truck because it was so big. Mm -hmm. So I ended up having to leave it back at my old place. And so somebody else is enjoying it, but uh, yeah, definitely definitely a steal for a dollar. But I, yeah, I used to listen to them. I find that they have better sound quality mm -hmm. than, than like a regular uh, player does. Right. But uh, yeah, it's just obviously hard to get uh, newer music on on such a old piece of tech. <laughs> Definitely, I remember um, my grandfather still having eight tracks, uh, eight track tapes. 
Back oh, in the I day. Like the eight tracks, like a count. Uh, like the four cassette the player. <laughs> oh yeah, like the the thick like thing, the thick looking things. Yeah, yeah. There were like these cartridges. I, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, they look like the old any like Nintendo yeah, cartridges. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. We used to have um, when I was young. Uh, well, you didn't have iPods or iPhones or anything, right? So we had um, these little mini clip things, mm -hmm. and they would literally play twenty seconds of a song. Wow, it's That's like all... a it's like an animated gif for music. <laughs> yeah, basically, it was. There was something else. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how successful that uh, that product took off, but I know after a while they stopped making them. So I don't think it was. So I'm going to ask you this question, but this is also for the chat. Yeah. Um, what do you listen to when you're working? Uh, Lo-fi. Lo-fi. Nice. Pretty sure that's a huge genre for artists. It's only because mm -hmm. there's like no lyrics in it. Yeah. Oh man, C can we make one of the questions for the, uh, well, I'll let people answer in the chat and then I'll talk about the question later. Like, what do you guys listen to as you work? So Sean listens to Lo-fi. Tim says, oh, hey, Sean, happy to have you back so soon. That's right. Hell. What's up, Tim? How's it going? Steve wrote, eight tracks always sounded horrible. Jan is saying that sound quality has done has gone downhill in many ways. Oh, yeah. Compared to this old, old beauty. Oh, man. Keith is saying, does anyone have iOmega drives? I, you know what, I ha I hadn't even thought about an iOmega drive for like over 10 years. That's so great. I remember it used to be like the coolest things to have back in the day. Okay, so N listens to epic music, Beatles, Emotionals, Cinematic. Steve listens to old jazz or blues, Dutch, uh, Dutch death metal. Dutch death metal. That's a. That sounds cool. That sounds really good. It sounds very specific. Like I've never. I don't think I've heard. <laughs> like I don't, I don't think I've ever heard that before. But it sounds pretty cool. Jan Tiersen, Anika, um, I put either reggae or a movie with music in the background. This is what Heather commented. Michelle wrote i listen to silence when working okay so this is like the one serial killer thing i used to do i used to like put on headphones <laughs> and like they wouldn't be connected to anything i would just oh, have them on as i'm goodness. working and like the cable would just be hanging down for hours and i'm just like working <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't done that in a while but i used to do that like i don't know i just i just i guess i needed to concentrate and didn't want any external sounds to bother me oh, yeah i did the, i did that too with my uh apple uh earphones like when i was mm -hmm. in class i would just keep them in at all times you know i would yeah. never never take them out just no music was playing it's completely silent it just feels yeah. yeah it feels like something's tugging your ear and it's nice yep <laughs> keep uh playing list they created mix of all gen uh, genres uh cody bear listens to nature ambience while i while she works um brian Jazz. Oh, uh, Dennis doesn't like music. Um, while, like working, music. while working, <laughs> oh, usually okay, might cool. watch a YouTube video. Cool. That's true. Yeah. Um, very lo-fi and classics sometimes. Arthur offer Afro-Brazilian songs. Cool. Um, uh, Keith doesn't know what lo-fi music is. Do you mind explaining, Sean? Uh, it's basically just like relaxing, kind of like piano and, uh, you know, orchestra kind of, uh, music, but there's just no lyrics in the background. So it, it's kind of nice because you can, uh, really focus and somebody's just not like yelling random words and stuff to set your, your path on a different or set your mind on a different path. Mm-hmm. But uh, sometimes I'll listen to, like, there are lyrics sometimes in lo-fi songs, but you won't hear, like, a, a full track or anything like that. But it's basically Pot just music without, uh, okay. without lyrics. Uh, plus one on lo-fi for Paco. By the way, we have the 
design feedback in about five minutes. So make sure that you submit your work. Cody Burr, I'm sure we'll post the link in the chat. Oh, there it is. Oh my God, Cody Bear beat me to it. Good job, Cody Bear. I, I wasn't even paying attention that you already had the link on there. Thank you. <laughs> Jan wrote, I think lo-fi gets old fast. Oh yeah, it does for sure. 100%. But like, there, when there you go, working, Keith. Oh, so, sorry. What was that, Sean? When you're working, you know, it's, it's, I, I just feel like when I, I have so many things going on, my mind goes like all over the place. But yeah, I 100% agree. It does get old very, very fast. Yeah. Um, Keith, I like that answer. I'm going to start listening to replays of Asus while I work, as you should. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Keith. Well done. Cool. So now we're adding some, I'm guessing, some depth a field here by blurring the objects Is that where, where we're yeah doing? just just bringing yeah bringing some things forward here just so that you can you know there's just more of a uh of an arrow kind of pointing towards the subject i'm mm -hmm. not sure how i feel about these things yet i just kind of randomly place it this is kind of like my experimental phase at this point um like i know that uh this is a really good base composite to work with. Now it's just mm -hmm. adding like extra elements, like small things. Like I can add like uh, before. I believe I had a. Uh, I'm not. I'm probably not going to put the vinyl player. I'm. I'm going to bring back that uh, paint bucket that I had here, mm -hmm. just to theme it a little bit more. But this would be like my base image. Um, so this would take me like hours to get to this point, and then from that point, I just use Pixel Squid, blend mm -hmm. everything in together, mm -hmm. uh, camera raw, all that. But this is just like the. Uh, I mean, it's finer. looking fantastic. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Some nice levels. Anybody in the chat want to guess what I, I like to listen to while I work? Um, brownie points, if you guess the actual artist. <laughs> you you listen to one specific artist when you? No, well, I'm saying. Oh, oh, okay, I was no, like, no. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, well. <laughs> I, I, there, there's an artist that I particularly like, so oh, almost okay. every day I would listen to a song at least. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I have a. I, I thought that you're gonna be like me, where you you like to replay the same song a few times over and over again. I do end. that sometimes. If there's, a, <laughs> yeah. if there's a new song that I like, you know, I'm like, all right, let me let me remember the lyrics or whatever. Yeah, sometimes you're just feeling it and you're like, yeah, this is actually pretty good. Oh my God, Jen got it right away. Eminem, yeah. Eminem. Yeah, that, his new song with uh, is pretty good. Which one? The the one with uh, Kid Cudi. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's a lot of. I, I didn't think you guys were gonna get it that fast, but maybe I mentioned it before, Jen. I don't know, but that was super quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I grew up listening to a lot of a lot of hip hop and rap as a kid. Yep same I'm, I'm a i'm a 90s kid so you know all that 90s rap the much music cds yeah you know, <laughs> much much music band cds rumstein yeah you know what rumstein's actually kind of cool i like Rammstein. oh i mean i don't want to say a lot. i've heard a couple of songs and i don't speak german but do they, do they even have anything in english i remember when i was a kid they had a lot of in my high school there was a lot of kids playing rumstein in german for some reason i don't i don't even know what they were saying but I remember my a lot, like kids in my school playing it. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate that. My work is so inspiring. Definitely. And we have about 30 seconds for the design feedback. So make sure you submit your work. We're about to get started pretty soon. I know Sean's gonna put a few finishing touches on his composite. I like how, I like how you're using the uh, the uh, transform distort feature to match the perspective on the composite. Oh yeah, gotta gotta match that perspective because you're not always gonna have like the 3D objects not always gonna be at the same level or at the same perspective. But mm -hmm. using those tools, you can definitely make it the same perspective. Yeah, and I like how you're using the brush there to make it seem like the grass is covering that paint. Really cool stuff. And that and then here's here's a really really cool trick. So see how sharp those those lines are. So now mm -hmm. I go on the layer mask and I uh, and I blur the layer mask. 
I don't blur Ooh. what's underneath of it, so. Super cool. And it basically creates that more realistic blurred up front kind of grass now because it was blurred there, so. And those are the realistic details you have to keep in mind. Like even, even that, I mean, cause you could have left it like it was, right? But mm -hmm. then just spending an extra 10 seconds just takes it to a whole nother level. Yeah, and then even like, even how they're not blue matching each other, then you just kind of, there you go. <laughs> oh my God, Jan, you have excellent memory. So I meant, oh my God. So, <laughs> how do you even remember? I, had, I hadn't thought about that until I just read it. So Jan wrote, Jesus, you mentioned Eminem and Lose Yourself and Karaoke with Matt Klaus. And he wrote Klaus in capital letters because then he also remembered the joke in a previous stream. I watched those. Oh, he said he watched it yesterday. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Because that was like, you know, six months ago or something. And I was like, oh my God, how did you remember that? I, but can, yeah. I cannot remember six months back. That's Yeah, sure. we were uh, we were making fun of Matt. I was making fun of Matt because uh, somebody left him a comment on, I don't know which social media, his, Matt Kleskowski is his name. And somebody essentially said, um, your last name is too difficult to spell or to pronounce. Why don't you just change it to Klaus? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I started calling him Matt Klaus. Uh, but yes, I, I, we, and then Matt and I were in, uh, we, back in the days when we used to be able to go out and hang out with people. Uh, Matt and I were in New York City okay. and we w went to a karaoke bar with a bunch of other photographers. And wow. I did do a beautiful rendition of Eminem, Lose Yourself. <laughs> which Matt has some video, but I think I'm going to like steal his phone and delete it. Um, cool. So yeah, oh, that's Jan. That's okay. Basically. So I'm going to have to start saying uh, Jan's name. I definitely do not have, do not have the Norwegian pronunciation, right? Um, all right, cool. So it's time for the design feedback. Um, Sean, any, any, um, uh, we might have time to come back and maybe add one or two little tiny things. I'm not sure, but um, anything yeah, you want to say? Is, uh, so I'll probably, you know, as a designer, I get addicted to designing. So I'm probably going to play around with this uh, more, but, and we'll open it up again tomorrow, but we're not going to continue on with this one tomorrow. We're going to start something else and do something else, you know? get a little cool. mix and match but uh but yeah this is kind of what i wanted to create for you all today uh just using like the keith herring brushes in the background there showing you how easy it is to you know take an empty room and make something out of it so cool um but yeah awesome well thanks so much and no let problem. me switch over to my screen now i think i'm it's safe for me to do that give me Perfect. one second now I have to figure out this uh, Zoom situation. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> here we go. Share screen. And I hope that you can see my screen. Cool. Let me know in the chat if you can see my screen. It should be Discord. Cool. Um, Sean, can you see what I'm looking at? Uh, no, I can't. Oh, you can't? There it is. Okay, cool. You guys can see it. All right, awesome. Perfect. Cool. So we're on my screen now, and this is Discord. Um, if you want to get here, um, Cody Bear has been posting the link throughout the stream, so you can click on that and make sure that you click on the current challenge tab right here. And this is where we're going to look at today's daily creative challenges. We we're doing um, hair replacements in Photoshop. So this is the first submission by JD. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and see um, a larger version. And I don't know why it's taking so long to load. It should have loaded already. So let me try that again. So weird. Um, I guess we can just look at this. Discord. Yeah, yeah we, we'll just look at this smaller preview and uh, can I zoom in through my browser? Yeah, I can zoom in with my browser. So we'll do that. Perfect. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you start, Sean. What do you think about this? So we were working on, on hair replacement. So obviously that's not his real hair. Any tips? I think oh. it looks pretty good. The only thing that you have to kind of like keep in mind when you're doing hair is that there will be like a glare across the front of the hairline only because it's full, like curving at that point and going mm -hmm. back. So like everything else is actually like, it's pretty good. Like uh, maybe the back of the 
the hair a little bit, warp it in like we uh, with the perspective tool that we use today. Easy, easy fix. But mm -hmm. it looks like pretty realistic, like for my uh, my point of view, like what I see, it looks like because I saw the original. It almost looks like, uh, yeah, like a completely different haircut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. So I didn't mention this during the stream, but one, if I would have had more time, something that I would have talked about was to maybe draw in some of the stray hairs that are, are coming out of his mm. his hair. Um, it just looks too straight, too smooth. Just to add a little bit more of, you know, a couple of straight hairs here and there just to make it feel... Yeah more realistic Not perfect I yeah mm -hmm. and i think that's the biggest especially when you're doing um 3d but also in compositing nothing in the real world is really perfect so when no. you have mm -hmm. really smooth sharp edges that's when things start looking a little fake so even though these edges may not be necessarily straight they're very sharp and that mm -hmm. wouldn't necessarily happen in the hairline you will see some variants so just just work on that and maybe work a little tiny bit more on the masking for these individual mm -hmm. hairs Sean, you were just showing people how to blur on yeah. a mask. Another thing you can do is select oh, yeah. the, the um, smudge tool and just smudge on the actual mm -hmm. mask to create basically hairs coming out or pushing hair in. So that's something that you, you can do if you like. Mm -hmm. Let me scroll down and this is uh, oh, so Reeves. <laughs> Keanu Reeves hair. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll, again, I'll let you start, Sean, and then I'll, I'll take over after you. I think it looks really good. Um, just maybe more uh, lighting on like the actual actual subject itself, but it, mm -hmm. this would look like really good on like a book cover or like a movie cover or something. Like that's what, I get that huge like movie cover kind of vibe right now, like DVD case because you have enough yeah. room for information in the bottom corners and at the top there. Yeah, but I think it turned out really well from what I can see. Uh, yeah, I think I think maybe brighten it just a little bit yeah. more. The pro I think that the problem is that the shadows are just so um, flat. There's no contour. So maybe if, you know, part of his face was a little darker, you know, follow the contours of the face, the contours of the body, the shirt and all that, and then just work yeah. with that instead of just like a flat gradient. It might look a little bit better. Yeah, and like up on the up on the shoulder there too like see how uh down the arm it has like a highlight yeah up on the shoulder it would also have that at yeah. the top like along especially because you see that yeah. bright light here yeah mm -hmm. so that I, you definitely will need to add that rim light all on this side yeah i mean you're you already created um this bright light here so you have to continue what that light will hit because you started mm -hmm. here yeah um yeah, you, you just need to go here and on the hair as well but overall, good job. The hair, I mean, I couldn't tell that that's not his real hair. You know, I, I guess the- Yeah, no, I couldn't. Uh, yeah. I couldn't tell at all. It looks pretty, it looks really realistic. Actually. Pretty good, pretty yeah. good. Let's scroll down and okay, here we go. This is, oh no, I'm sorry. Who was this? This was from uh, Fairy. Thank you so much. Nice. And this is from uh, Ted. Cool. Let me just click on this. <laughs> so it looks like Ted also composited, um, I don't know if this is Ted or somebody else, but composited the person into the background um, that we were using for, for the, 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 the stock photo that I used, which was not part of the challenge, but no problem. It's all mm -hmm. good. So what do you think here, Sean? Uh, yeah, so like since you are did take that extra step like to um, take a subject out, I would say like, yeah, the around the edges and stuff, you know, to make sure that your subject is fully within the frame, like mm -hmm. looks like his shoulder might be missing there. But from like the actual tutorial part where you're supposed to do like the hair and stuff, like I really like how you went with a gray uh, hair rather than because it's an older older subject so I like mm -hmm. how you kept that in mind you know it's not going to be like pink hair right across right so, why not <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I would say like maybe um the left like work with your levels and stuff on mm -hmm. on like the the gray because gray hair is kind of like more on the white side um mm -hmm. rather than like on the the charcoal side yeah so maybe like add more whites in there, more highlights, get bringing that contrast back to match the contrast of the actual subject. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's like, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. I agree. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I like how you added these strands yeah. of hair just coming out. I would add maybe just a few more, like I mentioned earlier. It also looks like the shadows are not dark enough. So I know he's supposed to have, yeah. you know, gray hair, but if his hair was, you know, if like the mid-tone is this shade of gray, the shadows will be way darker than this shade here. So I probably would add just a little bit more of contrast to, to match the rest of the image, because you can see that the rest of the image, the shadows are way deeper. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't necessarily match, but in terms of placing it on his head, you got the right perspective, yeah. you got the right um, angle. So that looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do you think here, Sean? I definitely think that it might need a little bit more blending. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, you you kind of you have the template and everything like that blank head ready uh, i just feel like it, the hairline might not be matching the actual hairline of the subject like uh, unless you had a really bad haircut that one day and the barber <laughs> went all the way to the back but uh but i don't know yeah maybe focus more on like the actual like blending of like the hair element on top rather than you know just placing it and saying okay that that looks you know good like <laughs> add more shadows lightness and then <laughs> levels right and also looks like the hair is going over his ear too yeah. so i wanna wanna fix that and mm -hmm. also if you're gonna create um so what i would recommend if, if this was a, a job that i had where i wanted to give somebody a mohawk and then like the side of their head is shaved i would actually composite somebody's head into it like the you know like a, a shaved head on top mm -hmm. of the yeah. original head and then work with yet another layer on top of that you know what i mean yeah. so in reality we have three layers the original layer the head with the bolt head and then the the hair that way it matches better that's assuming that the mm -hmm. that this particular set of hair here they didn't have the bold head um mm, yeah. you know it, it's because here it looks like you just painted it and if you just started cloning or doing something like that it would just look too patchy and not real so it might be better just to bring in another photo of like somebody's bald head and, and put it below that as a base layer. Yeah, it's like their texture, yeah. Your skin okay. texture. Nice. And this is the number, was this a hair replacement? Um, wow, if it was. <laughs> I can't even, is it? I, think it... I, I mean. No, I, I think it might be. Wow. Well, that, if it is, then that's great because we can't tell. So great job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you, <laughs> yeah, I can't tell at all. Like, I, I'm, I mean, I've done all the challenges and I can't think which other challenge this would be. I think, I don't think that they, they might have not though. Cause if I look at like the, the sweater, it looks like the sweater is kind of merging with the hair. Uh-huh. But uh, as you know, you you never know with Photoshop though, right? right. <laughs> you, it could, it could be. I don't know. Well, if this is a composite, excellent, yeah, excellent, excellent, excellent job, say, yeah. Black yeah. Becky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, so oh, Ted go. Re redid his um, hair swap, and yeah, much, much better. I yeah, think. Yeah, way better. Yeah. And definitely it kind of. Like, go ahead, Sean. Definitely looks like the you know like the the same contrast as the actual uh, yeah. character. Yeah. Yeah. Not it looks much, much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not not much not much to say. We basically. Um, I, I, I don't think he did this while we were talking, but he basically fixed all the issues that we mentioned earlier. Yeah. Great job, Ted. Yeah, thank you, Ted, for the submission. Oh, oh wow. Oh. This is from uh, Alux. Uh, my God, I'm not gonna be able to say that. But, uh, Alux sign. And I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing whatever your handle name is, but excellent job, Sean. What do you yeah. think? insane job I, th I think you did a really good job like yeah holy that's like something that you would see on like on those facebook ads that are like you want to look like this yeah <laughs> get a new hair growth formula or something yeah right? like, it, i mean the the slight 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 little tiny baby critique is maybe just make it a, a bit tad darker if you look at his original hair and his facial yeah. hair is just much darker this is way brighter so i think that's taking away from like the excellent job you did in yeah, that's true. blending it and matching it but besides that excellent work yeah it's really good actually like 
Really good. Really, really good. You know, plot twist, this is the Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> plot, plot twist is actually the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I, yeah, fair to mention that too. It's crazy though. Like either way, like I, it would yeah. be believable. Right. <laughs> like, right. I wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> Great job. Mm -hmm. This is going to go right up on his uh, LinkedIn and, and Facebook I, and all that stuff. And I, yeah. I also like like how even like the contrast, like around the, the facial hair, like I know it was already there before, but you did match like the blacks of your beard with the black in the hair again. Mm -hmm. Like, so it does kind of, yeah, the only, yeah, definitely the highlights would be something just tone it down a little tad bit. But other than that, like, like that's pretty good. You can yeah. throw that up there on like any one of your profiles and it's, it would be believable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got hair now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. This yeah. is, wait, is this the same one? Was there an updated? Oh, okay. So the rim light got added oh, to the shoulder go, yeah. here. Yep. Nice. So see, that looks much, much yeah. better. Way cleaner. Much it separates better. like the lighting from the subject. Shows them more as like a, uh, an actual like, like they're actually standing there in front of the light now right rather than standing sort of behind but sort of in front at the same time it was kind of like a mm -hmm. weird angle that the light would have been on yep that looks way better yeah for sure. much much better thank you mm -hmm. for that very um okay so this is a wow wow uh which is wow. a real one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so this is one And this is the other. Okay, so just because of the masking, yeah. you see that yeah. line here, right yeah. there? Yeah, just notice that. Yeah, that yes. would be the, and just the white around the sort of yeah. some of the on the left side there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, you did an excellent, excellent job in the yeah. blending here on her on her forehead and and the shadows and everything. Like, if you were to just clean up the mask like an extra 10%, you have almost the perfect composite. Grab that Keith Haring brush set, put it on that vinyl scraper and go around and it would blend it back in again. Yeah. Literally make it look natural. That's what I've been using for my, um, the hair like fixtures. Yeah. I've been really using the, yeah, the Keith Haring brush set and I use the vinyl scraper and it works amazing. Like it's so good. Yep. And this is uh, challenge number six, by the way, adding a, an ornament to your, oh, nice. to a, a portrait using a pattern along a path but excellent excellent job mm -hmm. i mean definitely yeah. if, if you just kind of see it without really paying attention you can't tell you, yeah you, you have to like to really look this is an mm -hmm. excellent excellent job um anika thank you so much really good oh we have is this an up yeah ted yeah. Yeah, <laughs> ted has an update facial Wait, hair he added, yeah he added facial hair <laughs> wow not bad <laughs> <laughs> he's slowly developing as we go down <laughs> he's adding like he's growing his hair yeah another plot twist sean this is the original photo <laughs> <laughs> no i think it looks really good i would have maybe added a little bit more because you you can see how his facial hair is uh, hair is going over that yeah. crease spike right Spiking here a little bit more yeah yeah but besides that i think it looks great the liquify tool would definitely help you out yeah. with that bottom corner. Definitely there, but... liquify. Mm. Yeah, really, really good job. Every time we look at um, at your submission, Ted, it keeps improving. So I'm glad to <laughs> yeah. see that, that you yeah. are improving. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is from uh, Van Damme Designer. He's 11 years old. Nice. What do you nice. think, Sean? I think it's pretty good. I almost think that it might uh, have a lot of contrast around the face again. Like it's mm -hmm. pretty dark around around her face because if you look at her face it's still bright like the light is shining right on it and everything like that from the original photo so i would just you know keep that in mind when you're doing edits like this still and 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 apply that same filter like that same effect to what you're putting in front of their face like because the lightness doesn't change dramatically um mm -hmm. but it would it would obviously go darker lower around the neck but not mm -hmm. much like up at the top of the hairline there it'd be really light shadows yeah and also the shadow feels like it's it is creating a lot of separation mm -hmm. between the hair and the model so it looks like you have like an inch of of, of a gap between her hair and her face so mm -hmm. maybe if you just bring the shadow up a little more and bring down the opacity that will do wonders <laughs> to the composite and make it feel more realistic yeah 
Cool. Awesome job, Bandam designer. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So this is after and this is before. Cool. So let's take a quick look at the before. Okay. And after this is Lee designer, eight years old. Wow. Yeah. See like this is uh again, like what you were saying before, like the loose hair strands, like this would be a perfect picture to use, like mm -hmm. sort of a, like a sort of loose hair. It's not, don't go crazy with it, but you, you know, it, it would really merge your, your hair back with your mm -hmm. actual subject itself. Yeah. Um, and I also noticed that like the bottom of the right side uh, there, or le maybe it's left side Here? for you. Uh, Here? Yeah, right there is kind of, no, uh, sorry, other side. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Perfect. That's kind of like behind the the shoulder. Uh, but if you brought that ahead, then it would really create that like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. hair look to it again. It won't because hair necessarily won't be behind your shoulder and ahead while looking directly forward. Yeah. And also for a hairstyle like hers and the type of hair that she has, mm -hmm. the hair is really uh, straight and just coming down her uh, yeah. head. But it the way that it was photoshopped in it kind of looks like it's leaning towards the right of the screen yeah. so maybe e either moving it or liquefying it over to the left a little more so it oh, feels yeah. like it's actually her head and mm -hmm. not you know just like some weird lump next to her <laughs> head but yeah i mean eight years old man really yeah. really good way better Excellent. than me when i was eight holy Definitely. i was i was i don't even know what i was making when i was eight i wasn't I mean, making anything that's like I was I was, 13. I was playing with what, what are those things called? The one we have a stick and a and a string. And you just <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> yeah. I didn't I didn't even touch Photoshop till I was like 19. <clears throat> oh um, my goodness. Let's see. Um, this is before. Oh wait, where's the app? Oh okay, we we saw the the app. Oh okay okay. Oh wow, here we go. Look at this. Oh my goodness. He and, has removed it completely. Or <laughs> added it. <laughs> or, yeah, or add, actually, yeah, maybe add, no. Maybe no, no, it's removed, it's removed. I'm, I'm trying this, to- Who's this by, is this by, is this by Dinas? Yeah. Oh, okay, I know him, yeah. He, he definitely yeah. removed his hair in this sense, Okay, yeah. cool. Really good though. Wow, you can't even, well, some some of your you can see some of your clone work behind the head yeah. there in the, in the back. Yeah. But that's and and that's what I was talking. That's what I was talking about earlier. If you don't have enough mm -hmm. to clone from, doing like an actual swap might be the way to go. But it, the excellent job. The only place yeah. where I can really tell that there's some patching going on is right here. And if you mm -hmm. fix this area here, I think you got it. Oh yeah, for sure. Excellent, excellent. Wow, that, that looks, yeah, you almost can't tell which one was yep. which. Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. All right, Sean, what do you think? Nice, I like this. Uh, they got the loose hair strands. Yeah, even yeah. Uh, with this one though, yeah, the, um, what we said before definitely needs to do the blurring technique that we did today, just mm -hmm. around the mask or the smudge technique. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a little too sharp for, if you look at the depth of field in the image, you see yeah. how blurred that is? So the hair yeah. would almost be the exact same way. Right, uh, right. The only part that would be like sharp still would be uh, in front, the right in front basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also uh, uh, one thing that I really like that they did is they, if you notice the shadows have this bluish tint, they added it to the hair. So good job on that. Oh yeah. Really good job. Yeah. It, it looks really natural. Definitely. This is for Mark. Thank you, Mark. And job, Mark. wait, what is this? Uh, new hair though with a, wait, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm guessing they just added the uh, uh, the grass brush. Is mm. that what's going on? I think so. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so if you really wanted to do this, my biggest critique is the sh uh, shadow is not contouring to the to the um, clouds. Yeah, I would, and also the hair isn't uh, touching the head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from for like some the reason the, sh the shadow bo bothers me more but just <laughs> okay so yeah, here's a fair. here's um uh how much time do we have 
He got like, oh wait, we don't have that much time, do we? We have like a minute. We. Oh, okay, cool. So, so. Okay, cool. So, uh, let me. I was gonna show something. We'll show it tomorrow. Um, updated. Oh wow, they're already updating according to the feedback. Wow. Um. Oh. Oh wow, they're all updating. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, they look fantastic. Yeah. Great. And you, you see, without that sharp line, this looks much better. I still think that this side needs a little bit, bit of work. You know mm -hmm. what you can do here? You can actually copy some of this hair. Oh. Just smart, copy it yeah. and then just paste it over on those areas. You know, just so you can kind of see the same curl just on the edges, so yeah. it's not a hard, sharp edge. That's smart. But cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for submitting all your work. I'll be back again tomorrow at 9 a.m. doing another Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. 9 a.m. Pacific, that is. That's 5 p.m. for me here in the UK. And um, Sean will also be back again tomorrow, if I'm not oh, mistaken. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> when, what, any any uh, preview of what we're doing tomorrow, Sean? Uh, no, I'm going to keep that a secret. So you have to tune in tomorrow to see it. Uh, no spoilers. <laughs> awesome. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Let us know in the chat if you enjoy this stream. We'll be back oh. again to... Oh, yeah, go ahead. And uh, for those of you who won Pixel Squid, uh, just send me a DM uh, cool. on Behance. And we'll have more giveaways tomorrow, right, Sean? Yep. Yeah, we have. Yeah, lots. <laughs> awesome. Lots and lots. And I know we have a hard out coming out, so it, we, it took a little longer, longer than expected. But thank you so much for joining. We'll be back again tomorrow. Stay tuned. We have another awesome stream coming up in just a few moments. So go get a quick break and come right back for another awesome day of Adobe Live. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye. Have a great day.